Hey guys, what is going on? You're back onto this channel, checking out some cool tutorials and tips. Today, we're gonna look at the tribe Archipelago, 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 Tribe. Archipelago. <laughs> Just kidding. I knew it was called that. So Tribe Archipelago are another division of the Tribe Redleaf and Tribe Photo Co. Studios uh, family. So we're going to look at those today and they are some of my favorite presets to use, the LXC presets. I really love them. You can check them out here. You can buy them through Tribe Archipelago's website. Uh, but I really enjoy them. They're awesome. But they have this faded look to them. And some people aren't always after that faded look. So what we're going to look at today is using the tone curve to crush the blacks and shadows or to raise them and manipulating the tone curve with the highlights and the mid-tones as well and see how we can either get rid of that faded look or manipulate the tone curve to make your photos look super awesome. Let's check it out now. Hey guys, what is going on? We are in Lightroom Adobe Classic CC. I don't know why Adobe have to make everything so complicated with what they say. Why couldn't it just be Adobe Classic Lightroom? Who knows? Anyway, that's something to take up with Adobe, not with me. Uh, today we're going to look at five images down the bottom here. We have three images taken on the 5D Mark III and two images taken on the Sony A6300, which was actually taken while I was filming with. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the Tribe Archipelago LXC presets. LXC stands for Lauren and Chris. They are both incredible photographers uh, and you can check them out on the Tribe Archipelago website and links via there. They are both awesome and they've created these presets. They say they describe it as these presets provide subtle greens, rich tones and above all consistent variety of looks to your images. So we're going to have a look at that today and see what these presets do to our photos. Uh, but specifically, we're going to look at over here the tone curve and what you can do with that to manipulate your photo because these presets come with that natural faded look to them. Uh, and some people like that. That's awesome. You can use that. Some people don't like that. And that's also awesome. Everyone's style is unique. That's the benefit of photography. Everyone has a different unique style. And today we're going to have a look at how we can either boost that faded look if you want to go even deeper or if you would like to get rid of it completely just by using the tone curve. But also we're going to have a quick look at what you can do um, and save time and don't have to manipulate all this exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, blacks, blah, 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 by just using the tone curve. So we're going to have a look at that and see what we can do. So we're going to hit reset on this because I accidentally clicked on something. My bad. There we go. So we hit reset. Now we're looking at this image of Ruby, flat image taken uh, around that golden hour time. Very nice. As you can see, ISO 100 on a 50mm 1.4 at 1 500th of a second. Uh, that is a little bit dark. Uh, maybe a bit underexposed, but that's okay. But we're going to look at these LXC presets with it. You get four color presets. That's what the C stands for. Well, at least I'm assuming that's what the C stands for. But we're going to look at that. So you get four color presets and you get two black and white presets. I love these black and whites because they've got wildly different alternatives. One super faded, one super dark and rich. Uh, we'll have a look at those in a second. But for the first one, as you can see, we're looking in the preview box at the top there. Uh, I'm going to actually use LXC03 for this image. Now, LXC03 desaturates the greens a whole lot in the images, uh, which is cool. If you like that, that's awesome. You can use that. Uh, I'm going to keep all this as it is, and I'm not going to touch that. So we're going to play around with it. So as you can see, there is that faded look to it. So what we do, if we go to reset, we'll just click that quickly. You can see the tone curve. The points are right in the bottom corner here and right in the top corner there, which means that our whites are as white as they can get and our blacks are as black as they can get. Now, if you look at the histogram up here, you can see that, that it's not fully pushing pure white, but it is pushing pure black at least just a little bit. And you can actually see that histogram is replicated down here in our tone curve so we can kind of see what we're working with. So if we were to play with this, that's going to be manipulating, that point there manipulates our whites and the spectrum of whites. So obviously that's why we're darkening and brightening the image there. If you wanted to bring that across, that's going to brighten it even more because what it's doing is it is actually making the whites whiter. So as you can see, if you look at the histogram in the top right up there, as we bring that across, that moves closer to the edge. And so once that reaches the point there, we can now see that that is pure whites in there and that is pure black. So we have everything in the spectrum of white and black across there. Uh, and then if we manipulate the blacks here, 
we can either make it blacker and make them darker, or if we bring them up, we take them away from the blacks so that it's not pure black down here. But we're not going to do either of that. So we've got the purest of white we can get, which is not pure white, and we've got the purest black. And so when we apply LXC3, uh, what we can see is that automatically brings the whites down here. So if we wanted pure white in it, we would just drag that across and do that. That would make sure that our whites are pure uh, or get closer to pure. Now, if you wanted to get rid of that faded look, simply you drag your blacks down into pure black and your white, whoop, that was the wrong one, and your whites up into the corner up here, and that is going to be as pure black and as pure white as you can get. And as you can see, that's taken away a lot of the faded look. Uh, you would then boost the exposure just to make it right, um, and that's going to be happy days if that's what you're after. However, if you are not after that, you can then bring these... If you want that faded look, you can do that by dragging the blacks up more, and that will be, see how the, the dark shadows in it are actually getting less, well, not, not less dark, they're getting less black, they're not as rich, they're not as deep, so what it's actually doing is crushing the blacks and stopping it here. So instead of being in this section of pure black, it's actually forcing them up into that dark gray kind of area. So that is one way to add to that faded film look and I would delete that photo, but as you can see we now have that contrast as opposed to the flat image we had before uh, where everything just kind of blends into one. It's now contrasted, her skin tones reflect that beautiful sunlight, there's nice deep dark shadows as well, but they're crushed just a little bit to give it that faded look. Now if we come across to this photo, thank you Jordan Simmons for just being such a greasy great character on the dance floor, past three weddings I've been at that he's been at, uh, he has split some item of clothing while dancing. Uh, so he's always a laugh when you see him around dancing. It's great fun. But we're going to play around with this photo, and what we're going to do is we're going to put on, I believe I would like to use LXC. Let's go LXC1. When that jumps across. Now, what we can see is again by looking at that tone curve, is that has brought the lights down, the highlights and the whites down, and brought the blacks up and crushed them a little bit. So in the top spectrum here, we are not. Uh, reaching any of the whites and the blacks are uh, just off as well which gives it that faded look now personally I think this image is great like that you can manipulate it a little bit if you want uh, I like to go for a bit of an S curve with my edits to make those blacks a bit darker and those highlights stand out just a little bit more just like that so all I did was manipulate those two there that's part of the mid tones the high mids and the low mids uh, and basically, if you can see, there's a dotted line behind there. Let me just move these out of the way. Ignore what the image looks like when I do this. But as you can see, there's that dotted line straight through there. And that is essentially the point of starting, a point of perfection per se, uh, straight through there. Uh, and basically, if you drag any of these points above that, that's going to make it lighter. If you drag it below that, that's going to make it darker. And in turn, that'll affect the contrast and the overall look to your image. So I would drag this up just a little bit more to fade those black because we brought this lower mid-tones down that darkened it quite a bit but that's okay uh, and I would deliver that image like that uh, you could if you wanted to boost it up just a little bit more just so you can see what's going on in the background but I personally prefer with dance floor uh, if this is your subject here and the main focus of the image you don't want too much going on around in the background to distract like this guy's face you don't want to see that and make you go, wow, that's the point of the image I want to be looking at. We want to be looking at the good time that's going on here. When you darken the image and bring the shadows up, that actually makes these little light streaks stand out even more. Now, this is the cliche, I travel a lot for work, or I travel on my Instagram kind of photo. Do you even actually travel if you don't post Instagram stories out the airplane window, or you don't post a photo of your feet hanging over the edge of a cliff somewhere? Uh, so this is in the Blue Mountains, and these are my feet. Iron Williams are comfortable and super durable. I recommend any photographer buy a pair of those if you can afford it, because they're just they're just pure workhorses. But today we're going to play around with LXC4 because I like this preset. I like the way it darkens the greens particularly. With this again, we're looking at the tone curve. That's straight in the bottom. So our blacks are straight black which means we don't get that faded look from the blacks we're actually getting the faded look from the whites because if we drag that up that brings them back but when we drag that down that's making the whites darker and fading it but you can also give it even more of a fade by dragging that up again like we did before personally i don't mind that again like i said i like to go for that s curve kind of feel uh, and that'll be what will bring your shadows down and your highlights up 
So if we bring this low mids down there, maybe a little too much, that's perfect. Look at that. So what that's done is that built in the contrast because it's darkened a lot of these images, uh, a lot of these parts of the shoes. Uh, so it, it, it stands out and contrasts very highly against the dark shadows down here. Now what we can also do, a fun little trick I'll show you, is you can use this selection tool here uh, and basically when we look at these we've got the four grey points, that's the points we've selected. When I hover over with this selection tool a point on the image, it'll show up with a little black dot and what that black dot represents is this section that I'm hovering over that's where that represents on the uh, tone curve there. So if I was to come over here to the highlight part of the boot, that's selecting that part and I can drag that up or I can drag that down and that will wildly manipulate that. Uh, but if we go up just a little bit with that, that builds that S curve just a bit more, which makes it stand out and contrast a bit more. So I actually like that quite a lot. Again, you can find the blacks here and you can drag it down. Whoop. It's very, very tricky because it's very, very easily manipulated. You've got to do very little I'm going to undo that. You've got to do very little movements as you can see. Uh, whoops, let's go back to the selection tool. So this part of pants here is obviously in that darker section. So that's either bringing it up or that's bringing it down like that. So that's just another trick that you can use to play around with your tone curve just a little bit. Uh, it's entirely up to you whether that's useful or not. Uh, some people like to specifically just select that but that also allows you to provide more points on the tone curve if you want and go wildly extreme there. We're going to look at this image of Mez and Chad. This is shot at golden hour on the Sony A6300. Now we're going to play with black and white. So if we look at black and white LXC6, uh, we can already see that that's quite a dark, deep black and white because what we look at on the tone curve over here, there's a lot of points. Uh, this is pure black. So we've reached in the corner here. That has gone as black as you can get. If we were to bring that up, that would fade the blacks even more and crush them. Uh, and as you can see there's a, that big S curve like I was talking about, that big drop down here which takes those shadows and those low mids down a lot to darken them up. Personally I'm going to play with LXC5, uh, that's a little bit brighter. One thing I will change here is the grain because it is quite, as you can see, quite grainy. Uh, so we're going to bring that down to about, about 3, that works pretty well because I'm not a huge fan of that much grain in my images. If you are, that's okay, you do you boo. Do you, boo -boo? So uh, what we're going to do here with this image is we want to make it, that looks nice. Uh, personally I think it's slightly too faded. So if we were to drag this down, we can see that doesn't do a whole lot. What that does is manipulates a few sections of that really dark black. And that is because in this tone curve section over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points. Which means basically when we drag that, that is only manipulating from there to there rather than from there to say that point if these two didn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag this down a little bit first. And as you can see that's working with our low mids there. Then we're going to drag this down which works down with our dark blacks. And so what that has done has brought in a lot more of that deeper shadow to it all, to the overall image and taken away a bit of that fade. Again you can boost up your high mids and your whites if you'd like to get rid of that faded look. So I think that's quite nice. That's taken away that faded look so much. It's just a little bit faded now, which is nice. I would be happy with that and deliver that. And then finally, this image doesn't need a whole lot to it because it already looks great. The colors in the Sony cameras are not as good as in the Canon, in my opinion, but that's okay when you've, the best camera you have is the camera you have with you. Uh, personally with this, I'm gonna use LXC2 because that brings that nice and again we can fade it more by dragging that up and to show the example of what we had before that's changing from there to there which is a larger spectrum as opposed to what we were doing in that black and white image before and I'm going to do I'm going to drag that up so that 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 really stands out that pure white there so that is how you play with the tone curve to affect your images just a little bit and give you either a boosted faded look with the LXC presets or take that faded look away just a little bit Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up down below and please click subscribe. We're hoping to be able to push out more and more content and tips and tutorials on photo and video and get this YouTube channel pumping because it's something I'm passionate about, about teaching other people what they can do uh, to improve their photos and working with some incredible companies. So please subscribe down below and stay tuned for more to come soon. But for now, have a great... You stay classy, San Diego. Now that's all I got.
It's that time of day again. Coffee.